Hi everyone, I'm Teresa Waters and I'm a Spanish 2 and Spanish 3 teacher at Golden High School. Welcome to our virtual back to school night. Um, students usually call me Senora Waters or Senora Aguas is fine too. So let's get started. Um, just a little bit more about myself. I moved here about two years ago from California where I lived for five years in the Bay Area, but I'm originally from the Chicagoland area. Uh, Libertyville to be specific, if you're familiar with the Chicago suburbs. Uh, I live in Arvada now with my husband and our dog Wanda, which you can see in the picture there. And this is my 12th, 12th year in education. Um, I've taught for 10 years now and spent two as a Spanish curriculum coordinator for my district um, in California. I've taught all levels of Spanish before one through five. Um, so, but honestly, Spanish two and three, what I'm teaching now are my favorites to teach. That intermediate level is really fun and exciting. Um, I studied abroad in Spain when I was in college, which is um, was a really transformative experience for me. I lived with a family that didn't speak any English, um, and it's really where I grew my abilities um, the most, even though I'd had lots of years of studying Spanish in school. Um, on a more personal note, I love cards, board games, puzzles, true crime shows. They have to be real true crime shows, though, not um, like Law and Order or things like that. Uh, and of course, my dog, Wanda. So a brief over, overview of Spanish 2. Um, if you're, you or your student is going to be in one of my Spanish 2 classes, um, Spanish 2 is designed to further develop students reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills in the language with the goal of them reaching novice high by the end of the year, uh, the novice high proficiency level. And you can see the proficiency levels over on the right-hand side of your screen here. Um, you'll notice um, that the novice levels down there, um, we move pretty quickly through those novice levels. And then um, acquisition or language development really starts to slow down in the intermediate levels um, and then slow down even more in the advanced levels and, and the superior or dis distinguished distinguished levels as well. Um, just to give you some perspective on this little chart over here, whatever your first language is, you are likely um, advanced or superior speaker in that language. Um, and it can take uh, lots of years for us to move through those lower levels, uh, which often happens in school. So again, Spanish 2, goal by the end of the year is novice high proficiency level. We're kind of hoping that students come in at the novice mid level, um, and then we try and bump them up just that next notch. Uh, and then you can see the units we'll be going through in Spanish 2 this year. Uh, unit 1, house and chores. 2, clothing and shopping. 3, vacation and travel. 4, let's go out. 5, around town. And 6, when I was little. So by moving through those units and talking about various things, um, that's how we're hoping to improve proficiency. So in Spanish 3, a uh, quick overview is we're hoping they come in then at that um, novice high proficiency level and we hope to get them to intermediate low by the end of the year. Um, again, through reading, writing, speaking, and listening, studying the topics below. So unit one is leisure activities like free time activities, unit two, fine arts, unit three, health, unit four, my international experience, five, interpersonal relationships, and six, what will the future bring? Okay, um, so I teach for proficiency, um, and I've talked about that a little bit now, uh, mentioned the word proficiency a couple times, you saw on that kind of inverted uh, pyramid, but I want to show you this quick video, it's like a minute or so, um, and you can really just read the captions at the bottom, it doesn't have much sound except for music, um, to explain a little bit more about what proficiency means. So here we go.
So I really like um, that video because I obviously I did not make it, but I had a similar experience when I started teaching a long time ago. I was really focused on vocab lists and grammar rules um, and less on actually communicating. And my students got really good at vocab um, and grammar, but really struggled, like the person who created this video said, to communicate spontaneously. Um, but of course, that's not my goal as a teacher is that they know grammar rules and can't speak and usually kids that's not their goal either when they sign up to learn language they want to be able to communicate in the language so um, i started kind of shifting the way i was teaching and i've seen some um, really impressive results from doing that um, so moving on to the next slide um, if we were in person i would ask the question or i would ask you to raise your hand if uh, you, yourself as the parent, um, took a language in high school and still use that language today on a regular basis. So you can just do that in your head. But usually after doing this um, for a couple years, I've only had maybe one person um, on average in each of my sections say that they still use the language that they learned in high school today which is a pretty sad statement um, and we need to do something different to change that. So just briefly how and why this class might look different um, than other classes or other even other language classes that your student may um, or may not have taken. Number one, there's going to be a lot of listening in Spanish because language is acquired through comprehensible input. Um, it's not learned by memorizing things. Um, that's short-term knowledge. Uh, language is actually acquired if you think about how babies learn their first language um, and young kids through just hearing it a ton and a ton of times um, in meaningful contexts. So we're trying to replicate that. Uh, students are going to need to stay engaged throughout the class period and participate in order to do well in this class because that's how they're going to learn. Um, students are going to be expected to speak in Spanish uh, and there will be less of an emphasis on memorizing vocab and grammar rules like I already said. We'll still do some of that because it is valuable to certain students um, and to a certain extent it can be it can be helpful um, kind of for that short-term knowledge and to edit what we're um, writing perhaps. So how can you support your student at home? Checking their grades in campus. I keep campus really up to date, um, talking to them about Spanish class at home, asking them how it's going, helping them understand um, that putting themselves out there and participating and making mistakes are all part of learning a language. Um, I think that's one of the biggest barriers with language learning is um, not wanting to make a mistake, not wanting to um, yeah, just put yourself out there. So um, helping encourage them to do so is certainly going to make it easier because um, that's how we learn. And then encourage them if um, they're willing to engage with Spanish outside of school. That would be awesome. Uh, some more just brief details. Um, when we this year, because we have such a unique schedule and we're in such a unique situation, when we're in person, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, if and when we go back to school in person, um, we will be in room 216 um, and when we're synchronous um, meaning when we're doing class live um, i'll be using zoom to do that and class will be really uh, interactive conversational almost always in the target language in those scenarios and then when class is asynchronous um, meaning um, When students are working, um, when they're not in the classroom and they're not on Zoom with me, um, I'm going to use Google Classroom as my main platform and they'll just kind of be working independently, usually doing follow up activities from whatever we did live or in person, um, and that'll be more self paced. And then just a couple final thoughts. Your students ability to use Spanish will grow this year. Um, I care a lot about my students. If you've had me as a teacher before, you, I hope you know that. Um, 
and maybe to a fault, uh, and their progress. So please don't hesitate to reach out for whatever over the course of the year. Um, I'm here to support. And there's my email right there, tiwaters at jeffcoschools.us. Of course, health and safety is my number one priority this year. Um, boxes of Kleenex are always appreciated um, when students come back in person. If you could send that with them, that would be awesome. We don't get those supplied to us, so I like to have a stash. Um, and finally, it's going to be a great year. I know it's going to be an interesting year, um, but partnered together, I think we can really make it something special. So I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, and don't hesitate to reach out.